So, recording is started. Um, like I said, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. I'm going to minimize this for now. And um, we're going to get started. Let me bring up presentation. And as we did the last two weeks, I'm going to do some presentation and then I'm going to co go to code. So I'll be going back and forth. So what are we talking about tonight? Well, what we're talking about tonight is decision making, plain and simple. The first part of creating, oh, let me go to the next slide. The first part of creating an algorithm is understanding how to get a computer to answer a question. And that's what all of this, if, elif, else, all of that stuff we're talking about this week is about getting the computer to answer a question. Computers are stupid, okay? People think computers are, are these brainiac things, but they're not. Computers are actually binary machines, and they have one or two states, one of two states. Something is on or something is off. It's like a light switch, not even a dimmer switch. It's not even as smart as a dimmer switch. It's literally on and off. And because of that, we have to learn how to ask a computer a question in the right way so it can give us an answer. So what is, I just talked about algorithms. What is an algorithm? Well, an algorithm is a procedure for solving a computational problem. Um, think the game that we're doing in week seven, that, that is due in week seven. But everything I do in my livelihood is about writing algorithms, okay? And it requires me to tell the computer how to make a decision. And it's learning how to think a little bit differently. And we'll talk about that some as we go through this. So what are the foundations of algorithms? Well, week one and week two are just the foundations of the language. Starting in week three, we have decisions and branching. Module four is looping, five is functions, which is really about reusability. Um, you will hear me starting at week four use the word reusability until you guys are sick of hearing it. Uh, data structures, which is week six, data storage, which is week seven, and object oriented. Now, seven and eight aren't strictly about algorithms, but they're still things that you have to know, but this week, Looping, functions, data structures, they're all about writing an algorithm. So, I think I just said this. Computers aren't smart, neither are programming languages. So, if I ask, if I say, is the sky blue? Anybody could look out, look up and say, no, the sky isn't blue, it's nighttime. Or, no, the sky isn't blue, it's raining. But, Python doesn't know how to speak English. That the way in which, which we are asking that question makes no sense to Python, and it makes no sense to a computer. So what we have to do is learn how to speak Python in a way the computer can understand. And that's the biggest challenge I see students having. I see students having a problem getting from what they would normally do to ask a computer, to, to ask their friend something, to the very simplistic way we have to ask a computer. And when we're starting to ask questions, we have to remember computers are dumb. So how do I ask a question? Well, if I'm asking the question, is the sky blue, Python says, huh, so how do I ask the question? I ask the question, yeah, I didn't get all of my stuff done. Sorry. I ask the question, I say, first of all, I have to have something of value. I have to tell Python that there's this value, and you're going to compare other things to this value, and then give me an answer, true or false. So if I want to ask, is the sky blue, first of all, i got to have a value. And if I have a value in Python, it's sitting in a variable usually. So I'm going to create a variable, in this case, sky, 
I'm going to assign it blue as the value, and then, and I'm going to go into all of this stuff a bit more in the next couple of slides, but I'm going to ask it a question, and that question is always going to start with if. I'm going to say if sky is blue, then we're going to learn some new operators. Double equal is um, a relational operator, and it is saying um, is the same as. So single equal sign is assignment. Double equal sign is part of a conditional expression. They, the two are different. So what I'm saying here is if the sky is blue, then that colon is going to become very important and will be the bane of new students' existence. Um, I'm going to take two print statements, and then I have this thing else. Else is basically just like otherwise. So if sky equal blue, the sky is not blue, then I want to do what's under the else. So let's go dig into this a bit more. Okay. So, rule, if, if and else are keywords, okay? So these are two brand new keywords that we have. You can't use them for variables, and they have very specific functions in Python, all right? Um, the way you read an if statement, because that's what that line is, it's an if statement, you're saying the sky is blue, true or false. So... You know when you have those, you know, you have a test, and it's a true or false answer. Well, it's the same thing with Python. It's always a true or false answer. So, the sky is blue, true or false. Well, if I look at variable sky, and I ask what is the value of variable sky, the value of variable sky is blue. So, if um, the sky is blue, will be true. And then else is a new keyword, and else is otherwise. Okay, so so in this case, the sky oh, isn't blue. Sorry, I gotta fix that. Sky isn't blue. Okay, Python can only answer true or false. Uh, the keyword tells Python that it needs to make a decision. Okay, so that's what if does, and there's another one we'll get to soon called elif, but it's telling Python, hey, you're going to have to make a decision. So read the rest of it to the colon as, uh, as if you were going to make it a decision. And because of that if statement, Python knows when to use the conditional and the relational operators that we're going to talk about. Can everybody please mute? So, the else keyword tells Python when the if statement is false, then do what's next. So, there's one more decision maker here. Um, First of all, you can't use an else or an if else without using an if. All right, so what is this new keyword L if? L if is another way of making a decision. Your first question always has to start with this. If you have follow on questions, those follow on questions should be L if. That's how, that's how they start. And then finally, when nothing else can happen, you have an else statement. So the else statement reads, the sky is red, true or false. Now we know the variable sky is blue, so that would be false. All right, so let's take some anatomy here of Python decisions. First of all, and I apologize, my graphics aren't what I thought they were. Um, double equal sign is a Boolean operator and it is red is the same as. So it, when I'm looking at this line right here, I would read, is sky the same as blue, true or false? 
So this is blue is the test value. Sky is the variable, and the variable should always be on the left, and the value, the test value, should always be on the right. Um, a colon ends the question. So when we write English, we have a question mark that says the question is done. Python has a colon. Without that colon, you will get some very unhappy errors, and I will show you when we go into the code in just a minute. So, again, LF ends the question with a colon. Always remember that colon. You'll, uh, I'll show you what happens, the errors you get, if you don't. Okay. Rule. If LF and ELF have to end with a colon, I can't stress this enough. I get my students who will email me and be completely, you know, frustrated, and it's because they missed a colon. And the colon's going to creep up when we do loops, so it's something to get used to. Um, yeah, that's the end of that question. That's the test value. Okay, syntax and formatting. So. A statement format is variable followed by Boolean operator followed by the value or variable to test. So that's another rule. So let's talk about mutual exclusivity. Okay? If ELIF and ELF statements are mutually exclusive, that means only one of them can be true. Period. End of sentence. If the sky is blue, Python will never evaluate L if sky is red or the L statement. Simply won't do it. And we're going to walk through the code with my favorite debugger here in just a minute. So we have to remember that these are mutually exclusive. If you have multiple if statements, they're not mutually exclusive. But the minute you say L if, you are, are saying don't even evaluate me. Don't even care about me if the sky is blue. And it will never get to the else if sky is in fact blue. Okay. So what are we talking about? When I talk about a conditional expression, it basically is testing a variable against a value. That's what a conditional expression is. So when I talk about conditional expressions, what you're talking about is everything after the if to the colon. That's what a conditional expression is. And it's important to know what it is because we're going to be talking about it. So a code block. A code block is kind of a new concept that we have. And that is basically the code that will be executed assuming the conditional expression evaluates to true. So these two print statements here will never be executed unless the sky is blue. Very simple. So, and there's an indentation here, and we'll go through some of that too, and I'll show you the errors. It's important to understand at this point the errors that you're also going to see. So that's what a code block is, and you have to have a code block in after the if statement. If you don't, Python's going to give you an error. So the, the real format here is you have an if statement, you have a conditional expression, you have a block of code. That block of code has to be indented properly. You then may, you don't have to, you may have an elif statement with a conditional expression. Under that, there will be a code block. And you can have as many L if statements as you need. There's no limit to them. Then you will have an else. There's no conditional expression in an else. It just doesn't, that, that's not the format. Else is just when all else fails. And then you have a conditional, sorry, then you have a code block under the else. And you'll see that these 
these statements are indented. And without the indentation, Python doesn't know what's in the code block. So you have to indent it, and it has to be proper and even. So, rule. It's only in a code block if it's indented. Okay, so that's another conditional expression. That's another code block. And then this is the final code block. So before we go into flowchart, yes. Uh, oh, I got a lot of questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so yes, Elif can be confusing. I'm just trying to get through these. You can take out, Victoria, you can take Elif out of the equation. You actually don't even have to have an L. You, if you're going to make a decision, you have to have an if. But Elif and Elf are completely optional, and they depend on the problem that you're solving. Um, you're right. If anything in the middle is Elif, Um, what is the difference between equal, equal, and is? That's a good question. I don't use is, and I think that there are rules about when you can and cannot use is. But I will have to go look that up because I don't have a ready answer in my head. Oh, thank you very much, Tim. Very good. I did not have that one in my head. So I appreciate that. Right answer. So you really can't use if sky is blue. Because blue it will be a separate string. You do need to use, in the conditional expression, a double equal sign. The, um, the value has to be declared at some point in time. It has to be declared before you actually get to making the decision, because Python won't know. If you are, and I can do that, I can actually show you that. Yes, thank you, Tim. That's correct. It will become more clear. Okay, so we're going to... Okay, so we're going to look at a little bit of code right now. Okay, so let's just go... Yeah, this is sky blue extended. So... Here's what I have. It's just like what we had on the um, on the, the slide deck. And let's just run through it really quick. Let's just get a configuration for this guy going. Okay. And I'm going to do my favorite thing of stepping through in a debugger. Okay? So... Sky is blue. I'm down here at the console. I step over. Down here I get a step over. We see up here that sky is blue. Sky is equal to a string and the value and the, the characters in the string make up blue. I can go down here under frames and variables and I can look at my variables. And I have sky is string type and it's blue. Okay, so now let's do another step over. And here I'm asking a question. I'm asking Python, I'm saying, hey Python, the sky is, sky is the same as blue, true or false? So when I hit this, it's true because sky is blue. 
I'm going to print Yippee. I'm going to print.